Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody had a, a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I know Kiefer is still recovering from St. Patrick's Day, but I, I want to thank uh, I want to thank the leaders uh, of the General Assembly from both parties and from both houses uh, for joining us here today. Senate President uh, Bill Ferguson, House Speaker Adrian Jones, uh, Senate Minority Leader Brian Simonair, and House Minority Leader Jason Buckle, along with uh, all of the sponsors of this emergency legislation that we're going to be signing into law, uh, which makes Maryland the first state in the nation to uh, immediately suspend collection of the gas tax. As we continue to stand in solidarity against Russian aggression in Ukraine, and as Marylanders uh, face the impact of uh, surging inflation with the average price of gas rapidly rising, this bipartisan action will provide some relief from the pain at the pump. And it's uh, possible because of the prudent fiscal steps that we've all taken together, uh, which have resulted in a record budget surplus. This, of course, is not going to be a cure-all, and uh, market instability will continue to lead to fluctuations in prices, but we will continue to use every tool at our disposal to provide immediate relief for Marylanders. In addition to this, these immediate emergency actions, uh, we're also engaged in productive discussions to advance long-term permanent tax relief for Maryland families, small businesses, and retirees, which is supported by an overwhelming majority of Marylanders. And with our state in stronger fiscal position than it has ever been before, we simply can't afford not to let more Marylanders keep more of their own hard-earned dollars in their own pockets, particularly our seniors on fixed income. So I want to sincerely thank the legislative leaders on both sides of the aisle and in both the House and the Senate for coming together to swiftly and unanimously pass this emergency legislation. It's almost unheard of for a major piece of legislation to pass in such a short period of time and with such universal bipartisan support. Uh, but together, uh, we have all risen to the occasion, just as we did last year when we came together to enact the Relief Act, which provided $1.45 billion in tax relief and economic stimulus for struggling Maryland families and small businesses. In these uncertain times, uh, as Washington seems to remain um, divided and gridlocked, Maryland has once again shown that we can still come together across party lines to put the people's priorities first and to deliver real bipartisan common sense solutions to the serious problems that face us. Uh, now we're going to sign this emergency legislation into law, but first I'd like to ask the Senate President and the Speaker of the House to say a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Governor, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with leadership from the House and the Senate uh, to move forward on this important initiative today. Uh, why are we here? We're here because we are showing that Maryland leaders know that when there are problems that Marylanders are facing, we come together and we fix them. The challenges around gas prices and inflation are certainly to a degree uncertain and unpredictable in part because of the unprovoked Russian aggression in Ukraine. However, what we can show as leaders here in the state of Maryland is that we can respond quickly and responsi responsibly in a unified and responsible way. Similarly, on the Senate floor today, we unanimously passed an, a $58.5 billion budget that fundamentally expresses our values as a chamber. We came together as Republicans and Democrats in a unified fashion to work on behalf of the people of Maryland. This budget, though, is not just a balanced one. It is structurally balanced by a half a billion dollars in the years ahead. It includes $3.3 billion of cash reserves. It sets aside $350 million for tax relief so that we can assist uh, our seniors and working families for their basic necessities. It provides $7.9 billion in funding for our public schools and expresses the intent of another $800 million of down payment towards the blueprint for Maryland's future for the out-year costs. We invested in our state's workforce by providing COLAs across the board, 
a 20% increase in spending for states, our, our state's four-year public colleges and universities. We invest in new workforce development opportunities, and we set aside over $100 million in additional funding for public safety and crime prevention and victim services initiatives. Finally, and what's unbelievably important over this last year as we've recovering and are coming out of the COVID crisis is that we have uh, incorporated an 8% increase in spending for our healthcare workers across the board, particularly for those who are serving the most vulnerable. Why we're here today is to show, both on the Senate floor and uh, where we are today, that when Marylanders have challenges, we come together and we solve the problems. Thank you. Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Governor, President, colleagues. Okay, I feel a little better than that. Okay. <laughs> I'm pleased to join Governor Hogan and President Ferguson and our hardworking members from both the House and the Senate in signing the gas tax holiday bill into law. This 30-day gas tax suspension is a targeted response to extraordinary circumstances. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has had an impact all over the world. It's had an impact right here in Maryland. When we were in session, it's easy to get tunnel vision and get caught up in the minutia of Maryland politics. But the dramatic spikes at the gas pump, at the grocery store, and elsewhere are hard to ignore. They quickly remind us that we live in a global economy. We're all connected. And when our allies call on us to stand against an author author authoritarian, a dictator, a tyrant, we have to respond. Maryland is joining President Biden and our country's allies in cutting off Russia's financial system. Suspending the gas tax for 30 days is part of a larger, unified, global response to help deter Russia's growing aggression. This legislation won't just provide a little relief at the pump and help stabilize our economy, it also counters Vladimir Putin's escalation and holds him accountable for his reprehensible attack on Ukraine. Now let's get that bill signed. 